uh, before we started, uh, <coughs> I want to ask that uh, how was your movie, that movie's playing? <laughs> <laughs> which means that you you are mindful and that's why you you're aware of um, being scared <laughs> so. okay um, we got a request uh, <clears throat> last week about the Heart Sutra and uh, uh, on page 7 I should go over it very quick Avat Loki Teshwara Bodhisattva practiced the profound Pranya Pramita and thereby realized that all five skandhas are empty. Thus, Avalokiteshvara overcome all suffering and distress. Sariputta, form doesn't, does not differ from emptiness, nor emptiness differ from form. Form is emptiness, and emptiness is form. The same is true for feelings, perceptions, volition, and consciousness. Sariputra, all phenomena are empty. They do not come into being or cease to be, are not pure or impure, and do not increase or decrease. Therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no perception, no volition, and no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no color, no sound, no odor, no flavor, no tactile objects, no mental objects, no eyes, no eye consciousness, and so forth, even up to no mind consciousness, no ignorance, and also no extinction of ignorance, and so forth, even up to no age and death and no extinction of age, aging and death. There is no suffering. No origin of suffering, no cessation of suffering, no path, no wisdom, no attainment, and nothing to attain. Because of because there is no attainment, there's, uh, the bodhisattvas relying on the pranya paramita have no obstruction in their mind. Because there is no obstruction, they overcome all fear and thirst. They pass far beyond all illusions and realize perfect nirvana. All Buddhas of the past, present, and future rely on pranya paramita and attain anuttaram, samyak, sambodhi. Therefore, know that pranya paramita is the great transcendent mantra, the great an equal mantra, radiant with wisdom, the supreme mantra that destroys all suffering and is eternally true. Therefore, proclaim the Pranya Paramita mantra, proclaim the, the mantra which says, Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhisattva. Okay. This is the very, very important sutra which we uh, recite every day. And uh, in, in our temple, we, we recite seven times every day. And I myself uh, get an extra one because of I have to offer uh, uh, mental food to this consolated being. So I have to uh, recite extra one. So I recite eight times per day on, on, on this one. Um, it's rather kind of hard to understand. But uh, look at these uh, uh, characters right there. And uh, we might get a hang of what the sutta said, okay? 
uh, first of all, is impermanent. Um, everything is impermanent. No self existence. And uh, whatever arises, it will go away. And therefore, it's empty. Um, can you name something which exists forever? Think. I don't think that there is something which exists forever. No. It, uh, whatever have the nature of arising, will have the nature of uh, cessation. So that's why, therefore, it's empty. Oh, Dharma is empty. It's very much that what I have just said. The word Dharma, it took me quite a long time to understand. Um, you have a duty to go to work in the morning. It's Dharma. You have an itch. It's Dharma. You have a mental image. It's Dharma. The carpets, Dharma. Trees, Dharma. Body, Dharma. Breath, Dharma. From the very, very uh, uh, superficial, tangible, to the very, very uh, subtle, tangible, um, it is all Dharma. Um, and all Dharmas are empty because of impermanence. Nothing exists forever, to make sure of that. And, and uh, all Dharmas are conditional arising. Let's say that uh, you smell something good. But because of you have a nose portal, you have an external object which give out fragrance, and then the fragrance come to your nose, and then the perception perceives it, and right there it decodes what it's like to be good, bad, ugly, such and such, and then right there judgment comes. So everything is conditional arising. It's just one small example for that. And then conditional existence. <coughs> this book right here comes from a tree, right? And then it goes to it goes to the uh, uh, no, the, the the author that uh, gave the text. And then it go to the, uh, the uh, printing uh, uh, factory, and here the existence of it. So everything, everything, this, the phone, and everything is conditional existence in separation. The conscious beings right now. Think about this. The existence of this because of uh, earlier that we read, uh, we, we read through, they said five scanners, which means five aggregates. That's all, five aggregates. And for the living being, there must be the five faculties for which we, uh, or the manifestation of faculty which uh, 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 allows us to be a living being. That's it. 
uh, I don't want to go in detail with such because of uh, again the let me go sidebar a little bit before I came to Buddhism I didn't know anything so everything is new to me all the terms and, uh, and, and, and the practices and everything uh, so at the beginning it was kind of uh, thrown off so just just you know be patient uh, everything is new concept uh, new perceptions and uh, such and such uh, uh, but uh, it's just like a the beginning of a dawn that uh, I put a seed into your consciousness and from there it begins to grow every day. Every day we dig down into what we've learned, uh, we gain the experience and we get the knowledge and from there that uh, here I am. So don't get you know discouraged if if anything that you don't understand such and such because of uh, it's very simple right? it's the human nature uh, that's it so everything is, is insufferable for which the existence of you because of this existence of me and my existence because of you too. So the, you know, interwave, interweaving that uh, for the existence to to manifest. And from this, that comes to the existence of uh, natural nationality. I'm kind of concerned when I use uh, the word uh, naturalism. Um, the example of last week about the water and the waves. Water and waves, you cannot separate them. When there is water, there is waves, and waves come from water. When water, when the waves no longer be be a wave, it comes back to being water again. There's no separation. You cannot separate it. As a conscious being like this, we cannot separate ourselves with the nature out there. No. And because of that. Therefore, there is no single entity which uh, claims to be uh, self-ownership. No, there is no self-ownership at all. Everything is coming to uh, intervene because of the inseparation. Suppose that you, when you read to the verse that uh, uh, no form, no feeling, no perception, no volition, no consciousness, no eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no color, no sound, no odor, no flavor, no tactile object, no mental object, no eyes, consciousness, and so forth, blah, 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 blah. If we substitute that no for the word impermanent, impermanent eyes, impermanent ears, impermanent nose, impermanent tongue, or we can, super, uh, we can substitute the, the word uh, conditional arising, then it's going to fit into the meaning of, uh, of the sutta. And one, one thing one thing that's uh, extremely important that uh, we have to put in, into an account that the wisdom. The sutra negates everything. 
but we exist. The six sense portals exist. How can we negate that? So the thing is that we come to the natural uh, 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 neutrality, which is negate but don't refute. Negate but don't refute. The negation gives you uh, a key to open the door to freedom. But don't refute because of uh, the, if you refute, it might lead you to the wrong direction. Oh, everything is empty, so I don't have to go to work. I don't have to support my, 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 my partners. I don't have to support my child because everything is empty. So I can go and rob the bank. <laughs> so, you know, every existence, every Dharma has its own right to exist. But don't attach to it. And that is the wisdom. And, uh, and, uh, they all negate everything because of because of the sutra knows that we we attach whatever we do we attached we attach to everything. <clears throat> years ago, no less than twenty five years, I remember, I remember vividly that I was standing uh, arguing with some people about the word God and the, the, uh, the God's cure creations. Um, I learned the de definition from someone who, uh, who imposed, uh, who, who imposed uh, the definition which he knows and then he you know, transmitted to me and then uh, somehow I get detached to it, and I always think that, oh, this is how the word God means, and such and such. So I argue against them. And then maybe 20, 20 years later, when I've read uh, uh, Thomas Merton, a very radical uh, Catholic monk. And I found out, holy, it was the same as the infinite and the finite, which I'm, uh, I use a lot. The inseparation of, uh, of, uh, of the nature in that, in everything, and the substanti uh, substantiality, the substance, and the emptiness are the same thing, but in they are not separate. They cannot separate. The substance means for the finite mind. The emptiness means for the consciousness. And if you think that God is consciousness, then the, then the, the, the concept of God creates everything fits into the context of, of, uh, of the conscious, consciousness and the finite mind. Same thing. I forget my piece of paper. But, and then, you know, I'm very open-minded. Very, very open-minded. Even though that I, I follow one path. Uh, I can't remember uh, his name. Um, something uh, and then another. A young monk, uh, young uh, Hindu monk, uh, the abbot of, uh, of uh, New York. Uh, uh, Vendata uh, Society. 
he gave many, many beautiful talks in which fit the categories of, 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 of Buddhism, of, of the Buddha nature and the mind. That's it. Still the same. So, because of last week, we have a little bit of a discussion about the the uh, uh, the self, the uh, great self, and the little self. Um, in in Hinduism, great self means uh, consciousness, means uh, Buddha nature. That's it. That's it. And the, the small self means that the variation of the mind, the multiplication and the, uh, the expansion of the mind, that's it. So they're all the same thing, saying the same thing but different name. Uh, so, with that, Going back to the house sutra right here. The, neg the negation doesn't mean that you're gonna denounce everything. No, you keep, you keep everything intact, which who you are is who you are. Don't leave your job because of it's empty. No. <laughs> You do everything as uh, as uh, it's supposed to do, but you don't get attached to it. That's all. That's all. And then, and when you don't get attached to anything, right there creates the equanimity, create the tranquility. And the equanimity and tranquility is nirvana. There's nothing else. Don't expect to be uh, uh, to get enlightened and then you go to uh, you know you go beyond the cloud. No, 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 it's not. You stay here down to earth, being whoever you are, and perform exactly the function of who you are: being a father, being a mother, a, uh, a co-worker, whatever. But with the mind of non-attached, and that's it. And this is how the Heart Sutta tried to lead you. Uh, the, main, the, main, the main point of the Heart Sutra is that not to get attached. And therefore, therefore they said that not even uh, attainment of, of Nirvana. No. No. To get you detached. And that's the you know, the main meaning of the Heart Sutta. Um, I'm opening the questions. Yes. Um, so I was meditating while two people were watching TV and I was just listening to And I had in summer that you know, people would call it actually kind of emptiness, like nothing exists. And I said, oh, are they really there? Or, you know, I just wanted to explore the concept. And then I was meditating and I opened my eyes and someone says, where did you go? You got lost. And I said, oh, they exist. So, so, uh, <laughs> well, the, uh, <clears throat> watching the uh, mental movie is very, very uh, fun. It's very funny. Um, do you experience that sometimes you, you get a, a, a pause, an intermittent between <laughs> your, your movie? Do you experience that? And. Uh, that space in between two thoughts, if we pay really good attention, that is the Buddha nature right there. The Buddha nature right there. Uh, take an example. This is this is square of emptiness. I'm using the square, but don't don't mind the frame, okay? 
is all empty. This is part of the finger of, 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 of my hand. My hand exists in the emptiness. And then my hand is gone. The emptiness is still there. So um, we see that uh, the, uh, the negative film, they go frame to frame to frame to frame. But the actual showing on the screen, on the screen is that this frame come and then disappear for the next frame come. Because it's so quick, we cannot see, but this is how it works when they play the movie on the screen. Same thing when we watch the movie. Sometimes we got intermittent and then we got a space, empty space in between. That is Buddha nature. That is the true consciousness. Very easy. But because of we get attached to forms, we used to it too much. We used to it for so long, for many eons. And that's why that uh, when that comes and they say, oh, this is me. Oh, where is me? And such and such. So, same thing with the, with the, with everything eyes ear nose tongue sight sound or perception volition sensation you know the sensations are impermanent or no self too because of in deep sleep you don't feel your body right yeah so sensation has no you know uh, shell you know, self ownership at all now and therefore everything is empty, everything is conditional arising or conditional existence. So when I opened my eyes, then I heard this person was seeing. So when I closed my eyes, it didn't happen. So our senses like opening my eyes. Oh. So and when my eyes were closed, Okay, so you, you don't see anyone, but you heard the voice. No, I didn't hear. When I opened my eyes, then somebody questioned. Okay. So opening the eyes, using senses, mm -hmm. actually cause me to interact with okay. that Okay. Is that good? Okay. Um, in some cases, that uh, we, we get lost to thoughts a lot. In many cases, not in some cases, many, many cases that we get uh, lost in thoughts a lot. And uh, the voice that uh, uh, playing uh, in in your mind, it's just a thought. You you thought that you heard someone saying something. Yes, yes. And uh, this is uh, this is the story of uh, of uh, of uh, um, great mass, uh, great uh, meditation teacher uh, Joseph Goldstein. As he was sitting, and then he thought that he heard a voice uh, coming down from the pipe, you know, running up there. And then he thought that he heard someone saying about someone killing someone, and this happened in in, in the meditation center. And then he said that. Why didn't they tell me such a thing like that? It, it, it's a big thing. It's a great matter, um, important matter. So why didn't they report it to me? And such and such, blah, 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 blah. Until he opened his eye. Oh, there's no one. <laughs> Nothing is happening. <laughs> so it's just the imagination of the thought. Now, because of you have, you, you gain some level of uh, tranquility then the mind begins to play its own movie. Watch out for this one. Watch out for this one. The mind, the mind begins to play its own movie. And this is how it is. Just like that when you, uh, especially in, in the dream, you don't have any control over the dream. 
And then some, sometimes you, you see the weird other bar playing some weird movie. And I do too. I, I see some uh, uh, some man with uh, with a uh, an ox head, such a thing like that. So you know the mind has its own life, has its own agenda, has its own activities, and such and such. Um, to put this into account, uh, it, the dream, in my analogy, okay, the dream is like a, like a, a combination which you absorb during the waking state. You see, you hear, you smell, you taste, you touch everything that uh, it re report, you know, back into your consciousness during during the sleeping state, which uh, you have no control, and then the mind its own start playing itself in a different combination instead of A B C D when we are at waking state, but when sleep it can go C A B D. And therefore, we have a weird dream and such and such. That's my analogy. Uh, so it's, uh, um, you know, the imagination that, like I said again, that uh, when you gain some, 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 some tranquility, the mind start playing such and such. Sitting right here, I experience that all the time. Yeah. So, nothing to worry about. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Yes, Daniel. Yeah. So to hear, were you saying that because your eyes were closed and you were very peaceful, that in some way it felt like the other people weren't there anymore or didn't exist anymore, kind of? Yeah. And again, that uh, when you gain some experience of that, before such a thing happens, you know it right away. You know it right away, and then you can stop it at the moment of beginning. Um, it, uh, the the first time you don't know, so you let it be. But once you experienced it, then the second time you catch up very quick, or or you you catch up a little bit later. But then you recognize it right away, and then you come back to uh, you know state of uh, uh, being. Um, as you gain more experience of that, at the very moment of beginning, you can feel it, and then you can stop it right away. That's how it is. That's how the mind is. Uh, there are two ways. One way is that you when we are not experiencing the, uh, in meditation we we tend to chase it away we tend to push it away and replace it for a different you know uh, object uh, well again because of fear and such and such but <clears throat> as as uh, for the experienced meditator uh, avatar is the consciousness. Consciousness is avatar. Water waves are the same. Same thing. Like this. And then when you see that, that avatar, you say, uh, immediately that you know this is consciousness. And then you go back to being peaceful right away. You don't have to suppress, you don't have to do any other means to uh, uh, to deal with it. And this is for the experienced meditator. <laughs> yes, Daniel. You know, I just say it's not that surprising to me that somebody would have that sensation because there are some supposedly very intelligent people who really believe that. So there was this philosopher, uh, Bishop Barclay, you may have heard of him. Good. Right? He's a good one. Yeah. So Bishop Barclay. He lived in the 1600s or 1700s around then. And he believed very strongly that, for example, 
if there was a, uh, a sound in a forest and he wasn't there to hear it, then the sound didn't really exist, that there was no sound. And to me, of course, that's total nonsense. I mean, the sound is a vibration in the air and there were other animals in the forest, they could hear the sound. You know, it didn't matter if he was there or not. But anyway, he really believed that, that if he couldn't hear that sound, it was a tree falling in the forest that didn't make a sound because he couldn't hear it. Bishop Barclay. Conditional horizon. Yeah. Okay. Um, rubber came from tree. And then people have a thought of making this. And then they took the rubber and they took the idea uh, to have a protocol. And then they made it happen. So the system, because of the because of the idea, because of the tree, because of the rubber of the tree, and because of the factory who made this, and therefore it exists. Yes. May I give another example? Yes, for yes. All right. So conditional rising, um, if you have attachments, then you're going to suffer, okay? So your suffering arises from your attachments. And if you stop your attachments, then your suffering will stop. Okay. So conditional arising is basically if this, that. Yeah. 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 And if not this, yeah. then not that. And it relates to attachment and suffering. Mm -hmm. And one way to look at Yeah. Yes. Colors don't really exist according to research. Um, it comes to my mind, they're photons and you know, they don't have colors. So um, we see colors in our mind, but they don't exist outside. Um, what you see here, it, the total whole it's spectrum good. of the color, but, uh, but because of the material, uh, which pass on all other color and retain only this color, and therefore you see it. You see this color. <laughs> That's it. So um, it's it's nor or neither existence because of the whole spectrum. Whole spectrum. So can you divide the whole spectrum of color into into how many? So many. <clears throat> but they all pass on and live in only this color, and that's why that we see because of the material that retain this color, and that's why it's all empty. Yeah, if I might add something. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's very interesting, all about colors. And you already know there's some flowers to us that look very boring, but some of the insects, they can see different colors. They can see ultraviolet, which we cannot see. So some of the flowers, they look very different to certain birds, maybe a hummingbird or certain insects. And, uh, and one, one, one interesting thing about color is that no matter how many uh, classification of the colors are, when you combine, combine them all equally, they become that color, they become brown, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's all empty, it, and, 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 and it's not because of empty, only brown, but you see the whole spectrum of the colors in that brownness. Same thing like that. Um, I'm curious about um, dreams. dreams. So I have a curiosity and kind of play around with um, like lucid dreaming and um, where you can wake up in the dream and control the dream um, and I'm just curious like um, in consciousness is that similar to waking up 
in real life because you, in a way, wake up in the dream. Okay, I, I don't quite get that question, uh, but I sense that uh, you are conflating the waking state and dream state. Are you, are you conflating uh, two of those? Um, <clears throat> uh, if, 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 if that was the case, then you are in deep doodle. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, what I mean, this is great. This is great that because of, because of, um, <clears throat> at the, as, as of right now, we are the first perspective looking into the dream. <clears throat> okay? So when we are dreaming, when we are dreaming, we are the first perspective looking into the dream. And the first perspective doesn't uh, doesn't <clears throat> say that he's at first perspective because of in dreaming you are in different characters. Sometimes you are you are yourself character, but sometimes you are a different character. But everything happened so vividly real, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> so real until that you wake up. And you, this entity, say to yourself, oh, it was a dream, right? Now, take that perspective as consciousness that looking at us right, right now. That's what I mean. It's yes. Similar, because when I was uh, meditating, I was, I felt like I was dreaming. I'm, I'm kind of sleepy, but I was in a continuous story. <laughs> kind of like a dream, you know, and then I, you know, woke up. Yes, yes. Uh, well, um, this is this is very very hard to to grasp hold that because of if the first perspective as the consciousness looking at all of us right now, we're sitting in the temple talking and listening, you know, looking up and down. This is a dream. This is all dreaming. We are all dreaming. It's just like that, you know, we sleep and then we dream. Yeah. Exactly. But it's just the perspective that the where it comes from. I said. So this is very, very, very deep, uh, profound, and you know, uh, understand. Are, are you saying that, like, you could influence your dream? So it's a little similar to even the waking state because you're influencing your waking state? Yeah, it's very brief, but you can train your mind to mm -hmm. wake up in dream. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. things that I do throughout the day. Um, I count my fingers. Um, there's certain cues that happen within a dream that you know you're dreaming. So if you practice while you're awake, actually, you know, like right now, um, because you don't know you're dreaming until you wake up. Why do you count so, your fingers again? To train my mind when I'm in, when I am dreaming, the, mm -hmm. a cue would be, you know, um, I'm, for example, I'm in a dream. I notice that something changes mm -hmm. suddenly and it gets my attention and I'm like confused. And then I look at my hand and I'm missing a finger. Mm -hmm. Now I know I'm dreaming. Okay. So... <laughs> But during the day, I oh, I have five fingers. I'm yeah. awake. Yeah, but, or but, but, whatever. But, um, <laughs> but do 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 this kind of negation. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> uh, you negate uh, uh, your your six sense portal one by one. Let's say that you negate your eye. You still wear a five a five sense portal. You negate your ear. Still, still aware of four sense portal until that there is no more sense portal. What is left? The awareness, and the awareness that looking down and saying, "Oh, everything is a dream." Very interesting. Extremely interesting. <laughs> yes. 
I tried that in the meditation, which is called nodding, where you say, like, when I hear things, I'm like hearing, feeling, you know, thinking. I think when I'm meditating and I just let my mind loose, then I just have the dream, like the, you know, the movie going on and on and on. Yes. But when I'm aware and I'm counting what's happening, I guess you could use our breath, but I think the nodding to me, it seems like as soon as I'm aware of all those things, I count like the five or six senses, then I get much more quicker to the, to be, the, for the consciousness. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> So, um, after doing my 10 days of Vipassana, um, I learned that we have defilement that we need to purify. Um, so I've been working a lot on those. Is it uh, difficult initially, like I kind of feel like I'm suffering, it's uh, like very scary. Is it normal or I'm doing That's something very, wrong? Normal. It's very normal. You, you're not only working with your defilements, you're working with your, your good deeds to be aware of defilements and be, be aware of, uh, of, of the good deeds too. It's not only the defilement that you're, you're aware of because of, uh, because of uh, we have a tendency that, uh, to, uh, to push away the defilements and that it, to keep the pleasure one. Um, it's it's our tendency. So, but be aware of everything. Um, many people come to me, ask, uh, why is there such an atrocity? Why is there a tsunami? Why is there earthquake? Why is there sickness and and everything? Um, isn't it kind of unfair? No, nature plays fairly, very fairly, because of, you see, the beautiful sun today. Um, um, you're okay right now. Um, so, it's come to the nature that uh, between A to the end, there is nothing left from good to bad. The existence of, of good and bad, everything, whatever you name it, it's there. So, so uh, don't, you know, don't get discouraged when we meditate and then we find out, oh, I have a lot of defilement, I have a lot of afflictions. To me, it's a good sign because of uh, because of now you detected yourself that oh there is such a condition existent in me and that realization is is the beginning to to freedom. And it's very scary. No, no, it's not nothing to be scared about. We all have that. Remember, this is this is how the mind is. I feel like becoming aware uh, that one is dreaming and becoming aware during the day is the same awareness. It's just that in the first case, the body is sleeping. In the second case, the body is going about its normal daily activities, but it's the same awareness. Same awareness. Yes, yes, yes. That's a, that, so, that, that's a yeah, great realization right there. If I understood the question correctly, and if I understood the description of the dream correctly, the answer to the question. Yes, yes, yes. The awareness uh, exists in, in uh, the, the awareness during the waking state and the awareness during uh, deep sleep, uh, during the dream state are the same. It's only one awareness. When I dream, I'm not aware. And most of the day, most of the time during the day, I'm not aware either. <laughs> no, no. But, but the thing is that when, uh, when, when you woke up and then you report it back, then there is awareness right there. For a brief moment, and then I'm unaware again. It's okay. Uh, it happens <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> and so, most people are never aware yeah. at all, ever. Exactly. 
it's just it's just because of the during the waking state that uh, we uh, we have a tendency to uh, to think forward you know your mind to go outward instead of going backward if you go backward then you are aware I started wondering are, are cats aware are animals aware and then I realized well, most people are not aware either <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, they do aware you know every, every conscious being uh, Every uh, every animal, even trees, have the awareness too. But it's just it's just a different level of mentation, uh, different level of mentation functioning, and that's that's why uh, that's why it's different. But uh, but uh, you know, come come to trees. You know, sometimes you know there is awareness in the trees because the trees know how to turn uh, itself toward the sun. See? I was thinking that exact same thing. Yes. Flowers are where they, you, you turn your plants around. Yes. But they always go right there. Yes. Right? They always go right there. The only, the only thing, the only problem which uh, uh, don't allow us to recognize that because of we don't have the same frequency as the flower thing. That's all. And that's why we don't see it as existent. Otherwise, you know, if you have, uh, you, you open your mind, uh, you have the, uh, uh, super psychic power you can understand it and you say oh this is how a flower thinks when the sun shines or when the when the rain comes this is how flower thinks i'm using the word awareness for different levels of awareness during the day i don't bump into walls because i have enough awareness not to, not to bump into walls i can drive from seattle to vancouver and not realize until I get to the border, to the border that I've been driving to Vancouver. I didn't have awareness. No awareness but is there the, was enough to not get into an accident. <laughs> the, the awareness is the same, uh, the same, uh, the same uh, throughout the day. Only the level of attention is different. The level of the attention is the faculty of the mind. Now, faculty of the mind. Uh, uh, the mind has many faculties. Many different departments, uh, the departments which, uh, uh, you know, uh, being very neutral, just like intention, attention, uh, 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 mindfulness, all of those, a thief still have those qualities, as well as the monk. Um, I'm curious about non-doership. Non-doership? Non-doership. Non-doer. What word? What's the word? Non-doership. Doership? Yeah, like, you know, driving. It's like, well, who is driving? Oh. Right? Because uh. you don't need the awareness for the body to do what it does, right? It's, it's just happening. And then the awareness. The automation that it's is, happening you know, is, yeah. The automation that, uh, that 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 drives you because of uh, a lot. Of, uh, it happens a lot, you know. With uh, with my uh, my brother-in-law, he he he's a heavy drunker, but uh, he didn't know how he came home uh, without getting an accident. And he when he came to the door, he just collapsed. He didn't know anything more. It's just it's just the the automation that uh, that uh, embedded, uh, you know. Uh, when you drive home, you don't you don't need to think that oh I have to turn right, I have to turn left, I have to step on the brake, I have to slow down the car in order to be home. No, it's automatically. So this is very subtle. What I'm talking about, I think what we're both talking about is if you look back on today, how many times today and what time did you practice mindfulness? Oh, I just did it one time, probably in the morning around eight o five. Because my dad was practicing it, and I forgot to practice. Um, I didn't realize I wasn't practicing my voice until just now. Okay, okay, because... There was, yes, there was awareness. I didn't bump into the walls, and I did talk to people, and I answered their questions, but I did all that without mindfulness, we, without awareness, without conscious awareness. Condition are arising again. Condition are arising because right here that uh, uh, we are conditioned to be aware, and that's why we are aware. Uh, Otherwise, that uh, when uh, when you walk out of the door, and then you might forget the awareness already. But uh, one thing is that I studied uh, the awareness. Just that one word, I think it it took me like two years to understand. 
if if you can apply your your remembering, you just remember, just remember, then it brings you back to being aware again. Just remember. Uh, most people don't don't pay attention to that words because especially in 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 Zen tradition they don't allow such a thing. But but remembering allows you to turn yourself back to prime you know the primary object or whatever it is to the state of being, state of present. And remembering. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, throughout the day, so we uh, we are uncus unconsciously uh, do uh, do things, and you know, without being aware, a lot because of the uh, the uh, uh, deep down inside you planned it already, and so when you walk into the supermarket, it automatically that it goes to work, mm -hmm. the mind that goes to work. That's it. Yes, you don't need to remember that. Sometimes you remember, sometimes you don't need to remember, but you still come and pick the right item. Yeah, yeah. Isn't um, the human being the only self-aware being? No, 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 no. That's a lot of uh, uh, the... Uh, 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 a being with consciousness is self-aware. Yes. What did you say, Joseph? Our cats self-aware. Yes. The way human beings are self -aware. It awares itself, <clears throat> but but because of the level of mentation, it doesn't have the logical thinking. It doesn't mm -hmm. have logical thinking. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of animals that doesn't have logical thinking, so because of the level of mentation, uh, we we can discern, we can uh, philosophize, uh, uh, we can uh, do a lot of things which cat cannot do. But it still can think, it still know, it still can play with you, and because uh, they're not like self-conscious, you know, they look in the mirror and they think it's another <clears throat> cat, you know, or whatever. It's like they don't have that, like, right? Yeah. May I say? Yeah, you're basically right. I believe elephants are thought to be self-aware. Is my understanding because they, they grieve for the uh, dead elephant, and they have all these behaviors that seem like they really do have some kind of self-awareness. If you observe, you know, a hand with uh, the chiclets, uh, the hand protects the chiclets. Yeah. So it, it has self-awareness, but a different level of, uh, of mentation, uh, of thinking of, uh, you know, um, and such. The, the hand, it may just be an instinct. That's the difference. Um, there's this instinct versus consciousness or self-awareness yeah, I'm just thinking like, it's relating to um, the whole like Adam and Eve story right like they weren't self-aware until they oh. suddenly were oh goodness I need to like you oh, know. It, it, it just a matter it's just a matter of reflection it's just a matter of realization that uh, years ago that uh, uh, that the movie father of the bright mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, his name? Uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin, he played the father, and then, uh, at the beginning of the movie, he said that, I was suffering, but because of during the suffering, I, uh, I identify myself with the suffering, so therefore, I did not have that suffering until I realized that I suffer. Mm -hmm. That's like, uh, until, the, you know, as of, as of right now, many of us don't realize some of which uh, we are not aware of until that we re realize that oh, oh, I didn't have that before. This is what I'm lack of, and such. So it's it, it's just a matter of you know reflecting yourself and then realize it. Uh, so which is great that you recognize that you have defilement, 
that is the, the first step, you know, to open the door to freedom. Yeah. If you don't recognize that, what happens? If you don't, then you keep going. If you don't, you're not going to come here. <laughs> Such a thing. So, in a way, yes. Okay. Is that like you train your, your mind all your life? Yes, yes, yes. You use, so use it to work. Driving the car. I mean, like when you walk upstairs, you're not looking because your body's already adapted. Yes, and yes, yes. Yes. Like yes. You, you. So I think, yeah, it could be some instinct, but I think most of your, you are training your mind consciously. Uh, what you're doing throughout your life. Yes, yes, of course, uh, the word training uh, applies to uh, Theravada tradition. Yes, we do train our mind. Yes. Okay. May we attain the Supreme uh, Nirvana, which is the Heart Sutra guided us. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, through uh, the explanation today, uh, we will gain some detachment or eradicate complete uh, attachment. Thank you. <clears throat> it is so, so... <laughs>